this direction Sets the stage to turn the page And there is an undercurtain I am hurting and uncertain Of the parts we have played My must should go on I can't say these lines again My must should go on Must I sing this song again Everybody's reeling, no concealing Your beauty is seed stealing Violins are singing Sunset's waiting, radiating Your entrance is breathtaking Why must you go on? I can't say these lines again Everybody. Welcome to episode 41 of the Four Wall Sunday Roundtable. <clears throat> it's going to be a panel of lighting designers, which we haven't had on in about a month. So I'm looking forward to this episode. Um, I, am, am, I am joined once again by my co-host, Jeff Kreuter. Hey, Jeff. hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing just fine. Thanks. Um, want to once again as always thank everyone for watching really appreciate it and all the great feedback um and again and also as always thank you to floral entertainment and drew and al Rodella for all the work putting these together throughout the 41 can you believe it 41 of yeah. these um yeah we're coming up on our year anniversary in a couple I mean, of a couple of weeks it's amazing it's also like there's, you know, there's a reason we're still doing it. And it's, <laughs> it's unfortunate, but we're going to keep doing them even after we're all back to work, which hopefully will be soon. Yes. Um, also, as always, important that I never forget this or I continue to remind myself to thank Chris Barron for letting us use his great song to start the show. And everyone catch Chris uh, Friday nights um, on Instagram Live um, on his channel. Um, we, uh, Drew, we have... Um, an episode of light humor an episode two finally coming out this week right We're yes do it. yep i can't wait hopefully it's uh we can put it out by by wednesday is what we're shooting for um we also have our four wall uh virtual vendor showcase it'll be the week of may 24th um and we're we're hitting the year on that too last year we did the first one, so this will be our second one. So we're excited to put that together for everybody. And also, the third episode of Light Humor will coincide with that, which I'm very excited about too. Yep, yep. We'll premiere a new episode of Light Humor during the Virtual Vendor Showcase. So yep. tune yep. in. Um, all right, as Drew said, lighting designers. We're we're going back to our roots. We st we started we're, we're we're lighting people. We started with lighting designers, taking some twists and turns along the way, but lighting designers again and. It has been a while. Um, we have a tremendous amount of collective experience with our group of guests tonight on this panel. Um, so everybody watching, uh, take notes. Um, you might learn something tonight. Um, let's introduce our people. All right, well, let's bring in our first lighting designer, Kate Ashton. Hello, Kate. Hi. And second is Mike Baldessari. Hello, Mike. 
Hello. Good to be here. Third is Tyler Mikalu. I hope I didn't mess that up. Well done, Drew. <laughs> well done. Hello. Yes. Okay. And last and certainly not least, Martin Thomas. Hey, Martin. Good afternoon. All right. Hey. Well, let's, uh, let's get started. Let's get started. Martin, let's start with you. Um, Martin, in the, in the very wide world of writing for live entertainment, what do you do? Uh, what kinds of projects do you work on? Um, concert lighting designer, uh, primarily I do um, what seems to be my forte is uh, classic rock. Uh, I've been the lighting designer for Alan Parsons for the past 17 years. Um, before Alan, I was doing uh, Foreigner as production manager LD on their 25th anniversary tour. I have also been for, uh, let's see, early 2000s uh, lighting director for Erica Badu. That just recently ended. Uh, we've decided to go separate directions. Uh, I've done D'Angelo. Uh, I've been a tech, uh, but primarily right now we're focusing on lighting design. And is it all um, live or, or, uh, or broadcast as well? A combination. We're doing, uh, you know, up until this year, we were doing live shows, but right sure. now we're looking at a lot of uh, XR, VR kind of things. Uh, we're doing a lot of uh, video. Uh, Alan has got two new live videos that we've been working on for the past couple of years, it seems like, uh, sure. that are coming out from our last European tour. Uh, and we've been in editing for that just to kind of, you know, sweeten it up and clean it up a little bit, you know, working with Alan Parsons in the studio is an amazing thing. So. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, Kate, how about you? Where do you work? I, uh, mostly work in dance and opera here in New York and thereabout. Um, I haven't done a play in probably three years or so. <laughs> so not a lot of theater here <laughs> anymore. Uh, I'm also the lighting director for the Fall for Dance Festival here in New York at City Center. And I often work as an associate lighting director at the Park Avenue Armory. Oh, cool. I was just talking about the Park Avenue Armory yesterday. Like I have to get on their, their list. They do. Oh yeah, it's really, really great place. Yeah. Um, Tyler Michelow. Well, I'm a, I'm a theatrical lighting designer. Uh, working mostly on new plays and new musicals uh, in not-for-profit uh, theater, regional theater, and uh, I guess very recently for me, uh, Broadway. Cool. And um, Mike, Mike Baldessari, welcome. Thank you. Uh, when people ask me at a party, what do you do? I say I'm a lighting designer. And then when they say, what is that? I say, well, I work on like Broadway shows and TV shows and concerts and movies. So that kind of encapsulates all of it, but that's uh, kind of what I what I do, what I set out to do. Um, so I've uh, you know I've done a couple of dozen or so Broadway shows, uh, but I've also done concert tours with people like Allison Chains and um, Neil Young, uh, and then I've done a lot of film lighting or lighting concerts in films um, uh, or musical numbers in films, uh, stuff right. like Nine, Rob Marshall's Nine, and um, Rock of Ages, the movie. And then uh, I do a fair amount of television as well. Um, things like lots of Netflix specials and, you know, that kind of stuff. And then the odd sort of Saturday Night Live, Seth Meyers kinds of stuff, you know, get the phone call uh, for Meryl Streep on Ice, that kind of stuff. Meryl Streep on Ice, is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> More on that, maybe some other, and yeah. then we'll do a show just on that. Um, oh, yeah. um, what's it, Mike? What's it like going back and forth between the live aspect of things and, and the and the broadcast? Do you do you have to change your your brain, or is it still your lighting designer head? Well, look, good pictures are good pictures. You know, good lighting is good lighting. Yeah, uh, I look at it three different ways. Uh, when we're lighting in the theater, it's organic, right? You're lighting for your eye. It doesn't matter. You know, you're lighting for people's eyes in the theater. You're using lighting to move uh, people's focus. And stuff like that. Um, in television, it's electronic. You're strictly lighting for the monitor. Nothing else matters, only what's on the monitor. And then I think of film as lighting, for uh, it's chemical. And by that, I mean, after we've lit it, so many other people touch it. And back in the day, you know, film used to be exposed and then it would go through film, uh, through um, uh, different chemical baths to adjust the color. Now it's all done with you know knobs and stuff, but a lot of other people touch the lighting after you've done it. So that's sort of the three ways that I look at. It. Yeah. 
Um, and Martin, uh, do you change your approach depending on whether something's shot or, or live? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, like Mike just mentioned, do you have, uh, a, a, when you do things for television, you're really looking for the monitor. You're looking for what it looks like on the screen. Um, I was very lucky to do a couple of seasons of Hard Rock Live with uh, Roy Bennett. Uh, so I learned a lot about what we're looking for as far as a visual for the screen, as opposed to what you saw live on stage. Uh, learned a lot from that. Uh, sure. Peter Morris was also a big input too. So sure. I've got lucky over the years to work with some of the best guys to do this. Yeah. Um, Tyler and Kate, do you do any, um, any sort of broadcast or any, you know, lighting to tape or is it uh, live only? At this point? I do now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what, what is it? What um, is, is you do. Dance doing a, a, a video? Presentation? Yeah, we did one in the, in the fall. We did uh, two programs and, uh, also, I have coming up, I'm doing a couple of um, filmed operas for Juilliard. Great. So, Guess you here we are. To perform to someone. Yeah. Yes. Um, Tyler, have you had, have you done Zoom theater? My least favorite. You know, I haven't, I haven't done any. Um, I mean, Good. the closest I get to lighting for camera is if it's, if it's live, you know, in a, in a live performance. Yeah. Um, like a, a capture or something. Yeah. Like a capture or iMag or something. But Yeah. And are you involved in the captures when when someone when your show is shot? Do they do you get to come back in and participate? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. they pull out the monitors, and like Mike said, I mean, you're you're you start lighting for those, right? Cool. Um, Kate, let's go to you next. Um, well, this is to everyone really. I mean, you've all been at this for a long time. Um, so this is a two part question. Let's go back to the very very beginning. What made you say to yourself, Kate, first, I want to be a lighting designer? And looking back on your career, especially since there's been some time to reflect over the last few months, why do you still want to do it? What do you still love about it? Uh, so I guess what really got me started was in high school, I had this really amazing teacher named Brian Phillips, who I'm lucky enough to still be friends with, and he might be watching tonight. Uh, and he did everything. He was like a one man band. Uh, he directed the shows, he designed them, we built the set, you know, we hung the lights. And I was stage managing for him and uh, we were teching something. And he looked up at the stage and he just said, God, I love light. And it was like something clicked for me. Um, you know, I hadn't necessarily really thought about it before. I'd hung lights, but I hadn't, I hadn't thought about it in that way. And I, I guess there was just never any looking back. <laughs> so. Yeah, and we have a. I blame photo. him. We have a photo <laughs> yeah. of you uh, here. Just tell us about yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, so I was. Uh, it was my first year of high school, and uh, I had run a follow spot for the cabaret musical performance that they do every November, and uh, then they asked me to be in this ad. So <laughs> there I am with my Altman 360Q <laughs> with an iris, a 360Q with a little iris. I just I, I caught that there. Yeah, nice. Those are <laughs> those people. Those were hard to come by. Yeah. yeah. We had five. A, a little yeah. dinosaur light. <laughs> yeah. um, hey, why do you, what do you love about lighting? Why do you still love it? Do you still so, love it? Maybe you don't. I, I do still love it. Uh, you know, going back into the theater, October when we did Fall for Dance, that was the first time I had been back in the theater actually since the previous January. Yeah. Uh, and it was a very emotional experience. I actually cried when I walked on the stage for the first time and saw the ghost light. It was really emotional. Uh, but I, I would say there's two reasons that I really love to do it. Um, the first is that I just really love to make things that are beautiful. Um, you know, and that can be, it doesn't have to be pretty to be beautiful. I think we all know that. Uh, you know, it can be ugly or scary or whatever that means. And then the other thing is, is um, you know, especially if I'm assisting or I'm, the, I'm an associate or I'm the lighting director, uh, I really like to help people. I like to help them find their way in the theater um, you know, help them with a new situation or a new crew or just adapt whatever their piece is. So those are my two reasons. Cool. Great. Um, Tyler, how did it start for you? Started for me in college. Um, I went to a small liberal arts school up in Maine and like a good liberal arts school, I really, really struggled to trying to figure out what to, to study. Um, cause you could study almost anything. Um, and so that combined with a, a mentor figure up there, I learned that lighting design was one, a career that actually existed. And it was something that, 
you know, allowed one to pursue science, history, uh, music, and art, fine art. And as a combination of all those things that sort of like excited me because I could just, I could major in something that was like everything. Um, and so I, I take that with me now uh, in the in the pandemic and I, I, I'm still a very curious person and I think uh, it's it's that holistic sort of uh, nature of design that really excites me. Cool. Yeah, we have some early photos of Tyler also. Yeah. <laughs> now, it, it, that's the Berkshire Theater Festival. That is the Berkshire Theater Festival where I uh, once I got out of school, I I went there and I was the resident um, assistant designer, which I think you you as well were, Jeff, in the year uh, either before. right before you or right after. Was it before? Uh, it was the year before me. Um, yeah. So that was 1993. You were you were part of the cool crew, 1992, as the, as the picture says. <laughs> That's right. We weren't so cool. And is this you as well? <laughs> that is me as well. <laughs> I did a lot of work as an electrician uh, early on. Look at those lights. Sorry, I mean, like that <laughs> right? 362. Those were those. Uh, yeah, those are all, uh, century 1491s. Exactly. Some of them had pink lenses. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, they were heavy. They were like cast iron, right? They were like these right. giant. That's not why we're here. Mike, how about you? <laughs> the first time I remember kind of recognizing it uh, was my cousin took me to see Kiss in December of 1977 at Madison Square Garden. <laughs> and I remember, you know, somebody hit a hitting a button and blinding 20,000 people and they all stood up and cheered. And I was like, I think I might want to be the guy who hits that button. Um, that was the first time that I, I really sort of recognized it. And and also, you know, having an influential older cousin who who went to a million concerts and said, like, this is unbelievable. These guys, this is like a Broadway show. You know, had never seen a concert with that level of production and stuff. And that was even, I think, the first time I became really kind of aware of of those things kind of mixing, which Later on, I found out it was Jules Fisher who had done that stuff. No way. Um, cool. So then, you know, I went to high school and not unlike uh, what Kate was saying, you know, I went to a, a high school that had a great theater program and I quickly worked myself into being on that crew and, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, uh, for me, I think lighting, it's, it's such a great combination of art and technology. And my, mo my mom is a librarian and my dad was an electrical engineer. So it was kind of a perfect kind of mix of those things. So that's, you know, the and then the other thing I'll say too, being in high school and I was in a band and we would go around and play to all of these elementary schools, right? Anything to get out of class. So we would go play to these elementary schools. And I really noticed we would play the same music for the same kids inside. And it had a completely different reaction to playing the same music for the same kids outside. Yeah. <laughs> and the only thing that was different was the lighting. That's yeah. why I said, oh, there's something to this. There's something to that. I will say you are not the first person on this show to uh, have played in a rock band in high school. Yeah. And you're not the first that. person to say that they wanted to be a lighting designer after being at a rock concert and seeing what light did when it blinded the audience and what the reaction was. So yeah. that, that is a, you know, that there's, if thing. this were family feud, yeah. everybody would say like, yeah. you know, it would be up there on the And board. it was a different thing in 1977. You know, it wasn't like, you know, you go to a show now and the, the audience is lit all the time. Yeah, you know, and and then it was a very different thing. And if you go back and look at even some of those early like Van Halen videos, and just doing a ballyhoo of the audience had such a completely different reaction than it does now. You know, so it it had a lot more impact. Yeah, yeah. Martin, you'd probably concur with me. Oh, absolutely! Well, great segue, Martin. Yeah. People in the audience. <laughs> um, you know, I, I've worked with a lot of artists who have told me varieties of things. Some people want to see the back of the house; they want to get the, all the faces, and some people want to see nobody. They want to be completely uh, the focus being on them. Uh, you know, it truly depends on the client. Um, I've been lucky enough that over the years, my rapport with clients has been uh, the thing that's got me further along in this business. So um, as far as the start is concerned, um, I was 
<laughs> I actually got my start by going to theater. I was a New York kid. I was uh, raised in New York through the early 70s, and my grandparents were really good about taking us to the theater. Um, but I had absolutely no idea about being a lighting designer, per se, uh, for a very, very long time. I think it was probably uh, early 80s before, and I had already been in the industry for about five years at that point um, as a tech, but I had no interest whatsoever in being the guy pushing the button, but I loved making things work. So right. big techie guy, I'm a car guy. So by nature, if you give me a wrench and a couple of bolts, I'm gonna put something together for you. <laughs> you and Drew. Yeah, I went to <laughs> mechanic school, there it is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, what was the first show? Do you remember your first show that you saw that you're, that you that you were brought to as a kid? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't remember it. My grandparents dropped me to a lot of off Broadway. Uh, uh, I would probably say that I do remember seeing, uh, my fair lady performance. Uh, but that did not make the impact that say, um, something with a lot more dynamic did. I, I can't imagine being a child being taken to something like Hamilton now because of the visual impact that the entire performance does. I mean, you know, we should have an entirely new fleet of lighting designers in the next 10 years. <laughs> I think that's true. I think Definitely. you're absolutely right. And, you know, in the seventies, the seeing off Broadway, that was like, that was the beginning of it. So it was, it was that's pretty crazy. Really, I'm sure. Yep. Well, my family had also been in the arts, uh, yeah. but on a peripheral vision or a peripheral way. Uh, they worked in uh, a lot of the jazz and blues clubs up in Harlem. So, you know, we were, that's where we lived. And uh, being able to go and experience theater was probably one of the highlights of my week. You know, it was like, ooh, yeah. I'm going to go see something live, not a movie or TV. <laughs> Amazing. That's awesome, Martin. And we'll, we'll stick with you for the next question. Uh, what was your path to where you currently are in your career today? Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I did a lot of broom sweeping and a lot of cable wiping. <laughs> <laughs> the best place to start. Um, I, I think it is. I think it gives you an opportunity to be able to really see how all the bones are structured. Uh, whenever I talk to a tech when I'm on a job site and I'm doing something with them and I sense that they have a bit of interest, I say, you got to start at the bottom. It's best if you start with the foundation because anything you build upon that will be solid after that. Um, I've always been a believer that you have to kind of really know a lot of things about this business to make sure that you don't over design something. I see a lot of that on Facebook now, uh, a lot of kids who, put together these virtual visual things. And I kind of go, hmm, you know, okay, how many trucks does that come in? What time is your load in at this point? How many points are you hanging? Yeah, you know, your your guy's show is going to start and you're going to have half the rig up in the air at that point. Uh, yeah. so. We should take a clip of that, Drew, and just yeah. like play that. That's yeah. like, that says so much right there. Yep, that's going to be the promotion for, yeah. uh, for the coming weeks. <laughs> Um, Tyler, how about you? So I mostly swung a wrench starting out. And then, as I said, we were at the Berkshire Theater Festival as the resident assistant. And that sort of triggered me. I mean, I met enough of people there. It was like Don Holder and Ken Posner and Hal Binkley that uh, I went to the, the uh, to New York City um, and then just needed to assist more people. Um, found more designers, and then um, I went touring. I toured with a, 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 a not-profit regional company called The Acting Company, and we toured all over the United States in a bus and truck sort of situation, uh, and that taught me an immeasurable amount about focus, about crews, about equipment. Um, so it was a combination of assisting and touring that was sort of my upbringing. And then once I got back to the city after touring, um, I started designing my own shows, um, all the while still swinging a wrench and assisting. And then ultimately you part ways with assisting and you just take the dive into your own thing. Definitely. Uh, and Kate, what was your, uh, your path to where you currently are in your career? Uh, 
when I was in college, I did an internship at Jacob's Pillow Dance Festival in the Berkshires. So just down the road from the Berkshire Theater Group where you were, Tyler and Jeff. <laughs> uh, and I would say that's where I learned that you could actually do this for a career because we had 20 different lighting designers come in over that summer. Um, so that was a really great place to make connections. And that's where I learned, you know, oh, you can do this. So I think I'll move to New York. Uh, I wasn't quite ready to do that out of college. So I took an internship at Juilliard. They have a nine month long production internship and I was in the electrics department. So I met a ton of people there. Um, and from there, I freelanced for a while, basically doing anything I could. Um, Jeff, I remember I was a board op, a substitute board op on your show, Lone Star Love, for a while. Oh, <laughs> if yeah. you remember that, that old gem back at the Houseman. I, I've forgotten <laughs> what show it was. Yeah. Um, uh, that show. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So I did that uh, for a couple of years. And then, um, then I went to NYU to get my master's degree uh, in design for stage and film. And after that, I was really able to to make a living just as a designer and an assistant. And you know, now here we are. <laughs> yep. Now here you are on the four wall Sunday roundtable. <laughs> totally. <laughs> uh, Mike, tell us tell us tell us about your career path. I mean, my the the first thing I did really, I was still in college, and I got the USA internship gig which there was one of those. Back which in the does day. not exist anymore. Doesn't right. exist. And it was me and Ken Posner. And I don't remember the third person, but Ken and I were, were both in it together. And it was a really great excuse to knock on people's doors and just be a pest until they let you assist them or, or be a second assistant or a third assistant. And I met a lot of people that way. And actually the first job I really did out of school was I ended up doing drafting for Dennis Parashy. And the very first thing I drew was, uh, burn this, which was at the Plymouth Theater, um, and then on and on and on with him. And I ended up doing Jeff. You'll appreciate uh, Penn and Teller when they played at. It was called the Ritz back then, which is now the Walter Kerr. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, so just that kind of thing, and then regular kind of assisting. But I was always also keeping a foot in in the music industry, or where, where basically wherever I could. One of the things that I did was I shaped every call that I could at the Meadowlands. So I worked every kind of load in and load out that they would let me be there for. Um, and I ended up, uh, you know, nobody wanted to climb the truss and stuff. And so I was always like, well, I'll go up there. And, and I would end up focusing all these, you know, big tours for Michael Jackson and Def Leppard and, you know, whatever it was. And working a million loadouts and stuff because it was, you know, how to make, make money doing that. And then, you know, you ended up with some touring people and I ended up being in Las, with some Las Vegas people and stuff like that. And um, uh, I didn't do lots and lots of assisting. I mean, I did do it for a number of years, but, you know, mm -hmm. I was always trying to parlay that into uh, a design career. And then you kind of work your way up to associate. Uh, I was an associate with Natasha Katz when she did My Fair Lady. Um, that's at what's now the... Um, August Wilson Theater, mm -hmm. and just kept going and kept going and kept going. But I did always want to do other things. So I always was trying to do some television, and I was always trying to just get involved in other stuff. Concerts was always there for me. I always wanted to do that as well. And, uh, you know, I worked in with Peggy and Jules for a while. I was never really an assistant, but I was working as sort of lighting director or ghost light, go get it started. And then they would, they would really do all the work and right. know, some of that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And then like Peggy and I did cabaret together on Broadway. Um, so, uh, and just kept going from there. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Tyler, who was the lighting designer for the actors? Um, uh, for, for the acting company? It, acting was Den company? it was Dennis Parashy. That's what I thought. That's yeah, what I thought. he was a great mentor and, and just an all around good guy. Really enjoyed him. Two people who were learned from Dennis Parashy. And all I, I have to say, Dennis, nobody could light like realistic, yeah. you know, plays. Right. Nobody could light it like Dennis could. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, well, Tyler, let's go to you. Um, how do you gain inspiration, both specifically for a project and um, since I think people could use inspiration these days, how, how do you find inspiration when you're not working on a project? Oh, well, being the the good kid from Maine, I, I spent a lot of time in the woods growing up um, yeah. and on the water, actually. But um, 
I go, I go to nature, I go outside. Um, I live right near an enormous cemetery and I like to go out there as much as I can, um, walking and, and enjoying the history of that, that space. Um, yeah, so really draw it from nature, but then also, you know, uh, museums and fine art. Um, my wife is a fine artist and I, um, I've learned a great deal from her and getting exposed to, you know, contemporary art and um, art history. Cool. Oh, we should go hang out at uh, Mike's house. Looks like he's in some uh, little forest right, right there. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Um, Martin, how about you? Um, very similar to Tyler. Uh, I take a lot of from nature. I live in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, I live oh. just off the Saguaro National Monument uh, east, so my vistas are pretty wide, <laughs> to say the least. Um, we get great sunsets here. We get great sunrises. We get great light that plays off the mountain ranges that we live near and around us that allows me to understand that positioning is everything. Uh, there's a point where the Catalina Mountains to my north look like they're literally in my backyard based on the way the light is. And then other moments when the light is shifted and I say, oh, look, that's a day drive to get there. Um, a lot of, of natural uh, experiences, is, and particularly for color combinations, you see a lot of various color because we have big sky here. So mm -hmm. you can go from a great amber orange all the way to a deep violet all in one scope. It's, it's a beautiful combination of, of visuals that we get uh, almost on a daily basis. So um, I'd have to absolutely say it's a lot of nature that influences me. But then people say, oh, you know, all your shows are asymmetrical. And I was like, yeah, well, nature is too. Nature so is asymmetrical. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Mike, how about you? I, I would say uh, I'm inspired by music. Um, you know, and that's, that's sort of what keeps me going. Uh, the other thing I'm inspired by, I'm a provider first. I don't think enough people talk about the business of show business. I'm a provider first. I'm a father second. I'm a husband third, and I'm a lighting designer fourth. One and four are are, are linked, obviously, but uh, I'm inspired that I have to be a provider. Yeah, we will get to the business of lighting very yeah. soon. <laughs> yep. Um, Kate, how about you? You know, like Tyler said, I'm a big museum goer too. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, back when we used to travel, uh, yeah. I would try to find whatever museum I could get to in in, in whatever city I was in. You know, at Hartford or I don't know wherever uh, Williamstown. I do a lot of work at Williams College in the dance department. Um, you know, that's very fertile museum ground. Um, yeah. So I just try to go see as much as I can. Um, and then the other thing I do is just try to look around me and and see how light hits, where light hits. Um, and the New York Times is, a, is also a really good source for photo inspiration, I find. Really? Yeah, they what? have really great photos. Um, cool. And like any particular section or just everything? Like just everything. Photographers, totally. Sure. I yeah. feel like whatever article I'm reading, you know, the photography is so excellent. Like, I don't know, I was reading an article about Prince Philip's funeral the other day, and there was an image of, of the queen just alone by herself because coronavirus, you know, she can't have anybody there. And she's surrounded by these little, I don't know, lamps or whatever is in the church. And I don't know, just made me stop and think for a second. So, well, they have great photos. Yeah, they do. <laughs> but, you know, what's funny, what, what, every, what you're all saying is like, as a lighting designer, just look around you. I mean, because light is everywhere. So if there's any, you know. I, I have to say, so where we are right now, uh, we're in East Hampton, New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is our house that's out here. And it was Peggy Eisenhower who invited my wife and I out. And I had no idea what, what it was like. Uh, I thought I would be a, a regeneration of, of the Jersey Shore. And I got <laughs> out here. And, and, and the first thing I remember saying to my wife was like, oh, this is why artists have been coming here for 100 years. You know, it, the, the light, you know, it's very sort of Dutch-like in that we're surrounded by so much water and all of that stuff. And it, that's a big, the environment's a big deal. Yeah. Cool. So that's interesting. It's like uh, if you're a lighting designer, are you constantly looking at light? Always. Yeah, I think Always. You can't, you Always. can't help yourself. Can't. Go ahead, um, Jen. No, I was going to say, I remember when I was in school, someone said to me, you don't need to go to school. Just go hang out in Siena for a week, you know, and like watch light. Now, you know, 
they don't teach you how to turn Lico's on and off necessarily, <laughs> but um, there is something to that. I did a residency at uh, the uh, university up in Houghton, Michigan, and uh, came in and did lighting design. And our first day was actually studying the art of the great masters and how light played in their paintings. Yeah. And everybody said, well, when are we going to hang anything? And I said, let's, let's roll it back a little bit. Let's yeah. take a look at these paintings. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, yeah. Light has been, uh, you know, influential for, uh, you know, hundreds and possibly thousands of years for mankind. So, um, you know, the fact that we get to actually work it and make it part of our careers is impressive. I think we can end now. That's yes. it. <laughs> <laughs> but, we're, but we're not. We're gonna we're gonna stick with you, Martin. Um, who are your closest collaborators on a project, and uh, who do you work with closely when you're designing? Um, I, I my closest collaborators are my kids. Oddly enough, um, I, the, both of, all my kids, my, both my boys and my daughter, are very artistic in their nature. Uh, you know, from various different mediums. Um, they all seem to have taken a, a shine to the digital medium as of late. But um, my youngest son, Avery, did a lot of content creation for me on my last tour with Todd Rundgren. Uh, my son, Emmett, helps me create character uh, animation for some video content as well. Uh, and my daughter, Erin, uh, uh, <laughs> she's hilarious because there's a point when I keep thinking that I do not understand makeup until she explains it to me. <laughs> and then I get, and then I grasp it entirely. It's like, Oh, now I have to light that differently because you just explained to me why you do that. Oh, wow. um, but, well, it's good. Uh, you have a little in-house, uh, some in-house, you know, that's awesome. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun too. Yeah, um, definitely. And uh, as far as uh, influencer, as uh, influences are primarily from the musical artists I work with. Um, yeah. The big thing is talking to the musical artists as opposed to talking to management. When you're trying to come up with a creative concept, you're really basing it on the art that they've already created. Right. So if you take their thoughts and try to replicate that, at least get close to it, uh, that's the most satisfying thing to me. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, Tyler, how about you? Uh, I mean, since I work mostly on new plays and musicals, uh, the director and and uh, the writer um, oftentimes uh, are my closest collaborators. And then next would be the set designer because um, they're going to inform mostly most of what I do uh, in terms of the architecture of the, the space I'm going to be working in. Um, uh, and then once I'm designing, um, I mean, my programmer is probably the closest uh, relationship I have because um, they're going to allow me to do, allow a light plot to sing um, if they're given the, 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 the right guidance and the right freedom. It's funny. I, we've asked this question of a number of groups, and and I was been waiting for someone to say the programmer, and um, you're the first person to say it. But you're right. That's that's your that's your closest collaborator. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mike. Uh, no pressure to bring up the programmer, but uh, you can say programmer too. <laughs> you know. well, I, like I'll say in in the theater, right? It's it's everything Tyler just said. Right. It's it's the set designer, it's the director, sometimes if the writer is around, but it's really the director immediately followed by the set designer. And I, I agree with, with what you said about programmers. You know, we rely on them. And as things keep getting bigger and bigger and more complicated, like I find myself wanting to use numbers a lot less. And I, I want to have the relationship with somebody that, that um, you know, I don't, I'm not relying on trying to call every single thing. Um, in the film world and television, but like in film, it's absolutely the director of photography and the, and the director. And it's just one of those things, if the director of photography can't capture it, it doesn't matter how good it looks. So I think that that's that kind of, and I'll give you the perfect example. Uh, when I did the movie uh, Nine, um, so Rob Marshall was the director and the DP was Dion Beebe. And the three of us sat together and wrote every light cue together, all three of us. So Dion was in the middle. I think I was on one side of him and Rob was on the other side, or I was in the middle. I, I don't remember, but, but the three of us did all of it together because he's got to be able to capture it. Rob Marshall is a theater person, right? He's, 
his background. Um, he's a choreographer and all. So, so that was that kind of collaboration. I think on some of the television stuff, substitute director of photography for video engineer. You know, right. that, that you really need to work with the video engineer. Some of the stuff that I do um, where it may be live and captured, that's a really delicate balance that you have to work so that it still looks good, you know, to the people who are in the room, but it also has to be captured and look good on TV. Yeah. And that's a really delicate balance. So yeah. in that case, it's absolutely the, the video engineer. The, um, I've been fortunate enough to have a, uh, a number of my shows digitally captured and sometimes that goes well and sometimes it does not. But the best experience was when they hired a DP who was also a lighting designer who knew exactly what to do. And it's also because there's never any time. So if, if the DP is also understands light, then he, you can actually do it and, you know, and not run out of time. So. And the other thing I'll say too, where yeah. the programmer, uh, is very important when you're capturing stuff because the programmer has to be able to do very selective, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Inhibitive. Very, yeah. It's been so long since I've been doing this, right? Um, very selective inhibiting mastering. And, you know, because you're doing a shot right from the front and now they turn the cameras around and now you're shooting the other way. So now what was front light is backlight. What was backlight is front light. All of that stuff has to be changed very quickly and on the fly. So that's the other thing that a, a programmer in that particular situation brings to the table. Yeah, totally. And uh, Kate, who are your closest collabor or collaborators on a project? And I mean, I think it's the same as Tyler said, since we're both in the live yeah. performance world, I have a couple of directors that I work with that really like to get really into the lighting, which, um, you know, I love that about them and it makes it really fun. Uh, and I'm also married to a programmer, so I can't leave that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but also I, I often work really closely with the sound designer uh, and the, you know, if there's a projection designer, then we're really in the trenches together too. Right. Well, oh, shout out to your husband. Yeah. <laughs> he should come on our show. Yeah. Well, um, he, he designed your, uh, one of your shows, Jeff. It's, um, he did, uh, I, I can't remember which one it was, but yes, we were just talking about you over dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me. Who are you married to? Evan Purcell is his name. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, Say he's hi. a great programmer. Hi. I will. I will. <laughs> well, it's it's definitely a different relationship to be married to uh, to your programmer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> no, we work really well together. We always have a really great time. He's I don't really, know if Sean Beach and I could get married. That would be, be awesome. <laughs> um, um, as promised, we're going to talk a little bit about business. So our our guests on this show have ranged from designers to managers to industry business people. And last week during the show, I sort of realized during our business owner panel that what we were asking them also applies to you. Um, you are all in essence, small business owners in, in a way. So let's talk about what that means to be a freelance lighting designer. Um, Martin, let's start with you. How long did it take you to figure out that even though you're a lighting designer, you're also a small business owner in a way? Immediately, um, <laughs> literally you. immediately. I was actually a small business owner before I was would be calling myself a designer. I actually owned hardware. Uh, I would uh, do all your local bands and do pyro shots in New York City because I had a federal license that could allow me to do that. Uh, I was the guy who was always sitting down in settlement and saying, but you've got to pay me too. <laughs> and yeah. uh, that's, you know, uh, as far as business is concerned, the minute that I started to uh, take on hardware, I absolutely knew that it was a business because there's things that come along with it. When I first started, I didn't realize, oh, you need liability insurance. Oh, you now have to do payroll. Oh, you now have to pay taxes on everything you do. Oh, and the, these things just continued to steamroll and until I realized I need to focus on this. I need to have an understanding of this because I can't keep just watching the dollars fly out of my wallet after every month and go, well, I thought I made money this month. Uh, so so yeah. business was really important right away. Uh, it took me, it, it didn't, it was not right away for me. Kate, how about you? <laughs> Uh, I think it was the first time I had to pay taxes and then estimated taxes. <laughs> yeah, that was very rude. It was not good. <laughs> um, Tyler, 
I, it was the, when the city of Philadelphia tried to sue me. <laughs> oh. I think that's uh, <laughs> that's really where I hit home. Um, Are you allowed to elaborate, or is it is it locked away? Anyway, it's all fine. It was all it was all. The city of Philadelphia is a little special, but they treat anyone who works from out of town uh, as a as a business owner, and and if you're doing business there, uh, they want you to pay some some extra money. Um, <laughs> But uh, I mean, I've been pretty lucky. I mean, with except for that, uh, I think you know I'm a sole proprietor. I mean, I didn't go the route of like being incorporated, so that's right. its own um, you know set of rules. But I mean, it's really estimated taxes that are the most important thing for me. Yep. And Mike, how about you? Uh, I'm going to say right on the first day, absolutely. And, and, and you know, kind of what Martin was saying. Um, I mean, I remember being on the bus going to work at Ken Billington Studio. So this was when I was um, in the internship program and I was probably, you know, a week out of college and sitting on the bus going to Port Authority and thinking, I'm going to have to retire someday. You know, like that, that did occur to me early enough. And yeah. I, um, when I go and talk a lot of times to kids, uh, one of the, I usually speak uh, at least once a year at Bay Street that's out here with mm -hmm. all of the interns and not just the lighting interns, but also the, the acting interns and the directing interns and the management interns and all that kind of stuff. And I talk about um, cash management, investing, retiring, healthcare. You know, the lighting is the easy part. You, you know, other people have said that, but the lighting is the easy part. It's all this other all the other things. So yeah, business from day, it's called show business, it's not called show art. That's right, that's absolutely right. There's another clip for us, Jeff. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> uh, Mike, we'll, we'll stick with you. Uh, you know, Have you ever worked for a company other than your own and, and or have you ever considered it? No and no. There it is. Great, easy. <laughs> Kate? I like a good quick answer. Yep. Um, sorry, Kate. Jeff. No, no worries. Kate. I, I worked for City Ballet for about nine months. Um, oh. And I really missed freelancing. I tried to do both. I think what, maybe I, I sort I of gave. Like, what, what, didn't, what didn't you like? Or, or what made you just want, want to just freelance? Well, I mean, part of it, I think, was that I, I wasn't designing there. I wasn't doing any of my own work. I was the assistant lighting director. So, you know, creatively. It, 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 there wasn't right. an avenue for me there. Um, and I, I guess I always really just liked going somewhere for a week and, you know, showing up and having a great time and then leaving and never seeing everyone until next year. <laughs> you know, that, that can be really good in a way. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, you know, I do tend to do a lot of repeat work. So, so it kind of cycles like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, Tyler, how about you? Uh, as a lighting designer, I've never worked for anyone else. Um, and certainly in the pandemic, I kind of wish I did work for someone <laughs> else. I mean, that's this is the time when I've considered it, but right. And Martin, how about you? Um, I've, I'm very bit a bit different than everybody else. I have worked, uh, as I mentioned earlier, about pushing the broom clean of the cable. In fact, it was funny because I'm pretty positive Elliot Crow will never remember me because I was that guy at C Factor. Um, I well, remember Jeff, Jeff will ask him. <laughs> there you I go. Will ask him. <laughs> um, I uh, remember uh, going to go see a rush show and walking up to front of house, and this is probably '81 probably, and uh, walked up to front of house and Howard standing on the platform. And I walked up and I said, I want to do what you do with my paper. And he turned to me and he said, go to work for C Factor. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all he said. And the next day I went to C Factor and I said, I'll do anything. And they said, here's a broom. And I said, OK, I'm good to go. Uh, but in my career as a uh, tech, I have been blessed enough to work with light and sound design. I've worked with OBs. I've worked with Robert Roth. Uh, I have had the opportunity to do some work with uh, smaller companies, East Coast Lighting and Sound, where I was their in-house lighting designer for a while. Mm -hmm. Not the other East Coast. We were the New Jersey East Coast. <laughs> um, and uh, I've 
been lucky enough over the decades to be able to be um, in-house and it makes you learn a lot. You see a lot of different gear, you see a lot of different techniques on how that gear works. Um, I worked with Robert Roth with the square park hands, if anybody remembers those. <laughs> and everybody said, how is there square? The light's going to come out weird. And I was like, it's still light. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's got to come out. <laughs> it's still coming out. So the bulb is still round if you're really concerned about that. But um, but no, as far as working for other people, I've done a lot of it. And I think it has influenced the way I run my own business. I think it has influenced how I work with other companies. Uh, when I hire a production company to do work with me, I really like to see exactly how much they bring to the table uh, because I've seen a lot of that table already. So if they're going to be a very helpful company, uh, if they're bringing things to me that I didn't remember I needed, huge help. Uh, but it's also when you come to somebody and say, I'd like to do this, if they can come back at me and say, mm, you might want to think about it this way, it's it's a nice way to have it happen. Yeah, that's sure. a great uh, great segue to my next question, Martin. Uh, in relation to the business part of showbiz, what is one thing you would tell somebody starting out? <laughs> <laughs> Mike Mike was right. <laughs> pay attention to the business side of it. Um, <laughs> honestly, it's the thing that I pay attention to most of all at this point. Design is almost naturally fluid with me at this point. If I've mm -hmm. got a great feel for the music or the perform production I'm doing, that part's going to be f really easy. I don't get writer's block, but the business part of making sure that we stay within budget, making sure that we get scheduled correctly, making sure that we've got a client that's happy, making sure that you're ready to make changes as necessary. Um, I did a, a tour with Erica Badu uh, about 12 years ago and midway through the tour she said i don't like it anymore and i'm like okay and she says change it and we had a two-day drop between toronto and new york and we sent everything back to george to nikki's company flipped it out brought a new rig back in crew was was amazing they like they never dropped a coin they just went new gear new placement new points and go so, well, and she was happy after it too. So it's amazing. I think in theater, people would just like fold up and explode. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, Kate, what advice, uh, business advice would you have for someone? You know, I would say don't, you can't give it, don't give it all away at every single show. You just can't, you can't call in all your favors for every <laughs> single show. You have to pick you know, which one is going to, you're going to call people for to help you out because you always need help. Yeah. So um, it took me a while to learn that. Yeah. That's great advice. Tyler. Spending money on an accountant is money well spent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wish I had learned that much earlier than I did. <laughs> um, and Mike. Yeah. I, I, the accountant, I think you have to do that from the get-go. Our business is complicated. It's very complicated, you know, and especially like what Tyler was saying before about with Philadelphia, you know, every state now wants to tax you. And I just had my taxes done the other day and it, or, you know, I, I don't know, I had eight returns even from last year, you know, which was, was a short year. So invest in having a good showbiz accountant who understands and, the, and the, the main thing also that that person's going to do is help you reduce some of your tax burdens with things that are going to help you down the road. Things like having a SEP IRA and stuff, which we all, you know, simplified employee pension, you know, it, it reduces your taxes. And then before you know it, there's some money there. So, yeah, it, I think it's like a, it's show business. I don't know how else to say. That's right. Yep. And well, Jeff, maybe we should have a, a showbiz accountant panel. Don't know. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's yeah, a, maybe. It's a huge kinda, help. Yeah, yeah. yeah. kind of kind of slow and dry, but it'll be informational. <laughs> not really. They have to take what we give them as far as it's not dry. If if you say, well, I really need to figure out how to write off these four yeah. elephants I got. How do we do that? <laughs> that's right. I'm sure they see some crazy things on the paper every year <laughs> this right. time. Like, how really? Okay. You sure. know the other thing. The other thing that I say to young people also is. If you're if you're spooked by any of this, pick up the phone and call one eight hundred Fidelity, because the people who are answering the phone are probably your age. I, <laughs> I've done this because I've done a couple of talks with kids about it, and I ask when I call Fidelity, "How old are you?" If you don't mind me asking, 
and everybody's under 30. Yeah. So, you know, those are the people who answer the phone. So anybody who's like, it shouldn't be a, the mystery that they try to make it, you know? Yeah. And if you have a question, call them and ask. And I think more and more schools are addressing this, but certainly in the last like 40 years of design schools, no one talked about like the business. No one, you know, you, they push you out the door as a designer and you talk about color and angle and storytelling, which is all amazing. Few schools actually tell you about like what you do. So. You know. and, just, and just like that, we are 55 minutes in. So we're, so we're going to, we're, we're coming up close, but let's start. Uh, we're going to rapid fire. Yes. Uh, Jeff's yes. round table, round rapid, table fire. rapid fire. Thank you. All righty. Okay. Here we go. Uh, Kate. Kate, you're up. Let me start with Kate. Kate, something you recently watched or, uh, oh, sorry. Same Start over. Boop. Kate, something you recently watched on TV or streamed? I haven't been doing a lot of watching. Hopefully this counts. Uh, I've been listening to the Met Live, or not live anymore, Met Broadcasts on Saturdays on WQXR. That counts. My that counts. Uh, the Obama Springsteen podcast. Cool. Tyler. Wow. Uh, name your favorite British crime drama, and I've watched it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Martin. Uh, the Grammy Awards. Uh, it was very uh, Jules Hollandish in the way it was produced this year. I liked it. Cool. Um, this next one is uh, is is out of a conversation between Al Rodella and I a couple of days ago. So it's going to seem like it's out of left field, but we decided we want to ask Martin. What was the first cell phone you owned? <laughs> I, I, uh, I had a Nokia brick in, a, in 2000, <laughs> and it was great. Uh, Motorola. Flip, no flip, flip phone, flip phone. Right. Um, Mike, I don't remember number one and number two, but number three was a Nokia kind of a brick thing that was a cell phone and a PDA together. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. That was the shit. <laughs> um, Kate, sprint brick. My friend AJ put it in Portuguese. I couldn't get it out. <laughs> oh, that is so mean. <laughs> um, so, um, Kate, uh, best advice you were given by anyone. Uh, Alamy Hughes, you should be able to find the answer to anything in seven seconds or less. Yeah, that's great advice for everything. Mike. Best advice I ever got was Alice from Alice Cooper. And it was, I was sitting in a doctor's office and there was a, uh, a Forbes magazine and there was an article, an interview with Alice Cooper. And I said, what is Alice Cooper doing in Forbes magazine? And I read it and he said, I made more money in real estate than I ever made in show business. <laughs> There you go. Tyler. <laughs> wow. Uh, Ken Posner told me, keep your overhead low. That's, that's the way it survived. Um, <laughs> Martin. Um, listen, always. I've gotten that as the best advice. Listen. Yeah, great advice. Um, Martin, um, uh, something you wish you knew at the start of your career? Uh, that not everybody in this business plays nice. <laughs> Tyler. Wow. Oh. Pass. We can come back to you. Mike. <laughs> come back to you. Uh, I, I want to back up what Martin said. You know, there's kind of like ethics you have, like you learn from like your dad, and then there's show business ethics. And those two things don't always jive. Yeah. Um, Kate. Uh, twofold. Uh, you don't have to be everybody's best friend, uh, but also be a good human. Yeah. Yes. Tyler, do you want to crack at this or we, you want to? No, stay? I'm going to pass. Okay, great. <laughs> um, Kate, so now I've lost my place. Oh, um, here's some, a little deeper into the weeds, but Kate, do you still reference gel book numbers when you're using LEDs or do you talk about color? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. It, it, you know, it's most people do, but there's a percentage that don't. Mike, do you still use gel book numbers? Yes. And particularly for orange. I said, go to R22. R21, R22. Tyler. Uh, R59. Yeah, I still you do. Uh, yeah. You still use the numbers. Yeah. Martin. Yep. Our, uh, let's see, Lee 181 for me. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Um, Martin, what is the least favorite thing you have to do as part of your job? Uh, crap. Uh, making budget cuts. Yeah. Making budget Tyler. cuts. Drafting. Tyler. Drafting. Mike, uh, I don't like lighting. I like having lit. Lighting is really hard. 
<laughs> um, okay. Focusing the backlight. Focusing backlight. I hate I focusing backlight. So specific. I love it. Um, Front light's fine. Side light, whatever. Yeah. Backlight. Don't like it. Great. I don't like it. Um, uh, favorite part of the process for you, Kate? Oh, uh, I think that I am unusual in that I really like the paperwork part. You and Tyler should work together. Um, yeah. Mike, <laughs> uh, favorite part of the process? Favorite part, I love the kind of jam sessions early on when you're sitting around with the director and a blank piece of paper and a set designer and maybe a costume designer, that kind of like free form jam session. That's my favorite part. Tyler. Focusing the backlight. <laughs> I, I, I really I really do enjoy focus. Focus is one of my favorite things. Cool. Tune in to uh episode uh two of Light Humor. That's right. <laughs> that big, oh, you're gonna love oh, it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, uh, Martin, favorite part of the process for you? Um, I mentioned this earlier, working with the artist, uh, being able to get their vision out of their head and onto the stage. I love that. Yeah. Cool. Um, Martin, what would you invent or like to see invented work related or otherwise? Anything you can <laughs> uh, time machine, <laughs> uh, <mine>. transporter. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You're not the first. Tyler. I want a, a, a tech table chair that doesn't hurt. Oh, God. Um, Mike. Um, I would love to see, and I think we're going to come across this coming up, but some kind of way for uh, calibrating LED fixtures very quickly that they can somehow feed back into the console. And, and the reason I say this is when lights come out of the shops, particularly the New York shops, if they've been on a Broadway show in the same color blue for a year, and you have those couple of lights j figured out with, or, you know, thrown in with everything else. They're never going to be in the same color blue. Yeah. And if you're doing a one-off TV show and you have a couple of hundred lights, some way for the lights to feed back, like how old they are or something. Yeah. Sure. Wow, that's a great idea. Um, Kate. <laughs> Headset that automatically mutes if someone coughs or eats. You should watch episode one of Light Humor. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and Kate, where were you when you were told to shut it all down a year ago? So I had uh, had a baby a couple of weeks before, so I don't know. <laughs> so either trying to sleep or trying to feed her. Right. Um, trying to survive. Yeah. Um, I, I was actually, we were doing a survey. I was doing David Letterman's uh, My Next Guest Needs No Introduction, and we were doing a survey at the um, uh, Duke Ellington High School in Washington, D.C. We were going to do a show with Dave Chappelle. And they were going to rename the theater and all this kind of stuff. And as we're doing the production meeting, people are kind of backing off of each other. And, oh, man. and then, you know, went to the airport and the guys on the, you know how like at the airport, they say, okay, gold members can get on, you know, silver members. And there was nobody in the airport. And I went up to the guy, I said, dude, there's like six people here. And he just went, all right, everybody get on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> um, yikes. Um, Tyler, where were you? What were you I doing? was uh, at Circle in the Square on day two of Focus for American Buffalo. Ah, wow. Did you finish or no? Still, uh, no, still, still, back? still there. What channel did you leave off on? No, I don't know. The backlight. It was the backlight. <laughs> it was the backlight. <laughs> <All> backlight. <laughs> um, Martin. I was advancing uh, the Alan Parsons uh, live project tour, and we got the call that we were not going to be going on our cruise, which I was so excited to not go on a cruise at that point. At that point, yeah. yeah. Well, I guess that's good. Um, all right, that's the end of the official rapid fire section, but we're going to rapid fire through the end of this because we're at an hour. Um, so Martin, let's stick with you. Live entertainment is all but shut down. Um, we sort of touched on this earlier, so maybe maybe this is not a valid question, but have you done any film and video during the pandemic? I haven't done anything that has been uh, live. Everything is, I'm working on XR, VR stuff, uh, learning that, uh, got the new capture and, and uh, yeah. you know, learning that kind of things. So it's been basically learn all you can learn right now. Yeah. Um, Kate, you mentioned you did just some, uh, some Fall for Dance um, yep. on video. Went well? Yep. Oh, uh, yeah, it was great. Great. It was really fun to be back and be with everyone. Yeah. And Mike, have you done any uh, live A couple things? of things, yeah. I, I got yeah. a phone call one Saturday night, a sort of desperate phone call from NBC saying one of their LDs had tested positive. So uh, could I come in on Monday? 
you know, that, and that was a whole process getting through, you know, all of that. And then the other thing I did was a couple of weeks ago, uh, I did a new production of After Midnight for Signature Theater in DC. Um, and that okay. uh, we were doing just for theater. I'm uh, sorry, I'm sorry. We were doing it just for camera. Just for streaming. So, yeah, we were in the theater, but we were only lighting it for television. Oh, and nothing, cool. you know, no live audience, no anything to right. do. Live. Yeah. Um, Tyler, have you done I any did, of those? I did one little music video that was three minutes long. That was it. Were you on site or did you have to do it from your living room? I was on site at the Connolly Theater downtown. Oh, cool. The Connolly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we, Mike, before I go to you, we're going to bring up your uh, old photo here of you oh. uh, that we forgot to. Uh... <laughs> right. So that's that's high school. So I think that's that's probably my junior or senior year of high school. And that's um, 30 6.6K dimmers. Wow. And that's the wow. that's the grandmaster. So the way you had to click in all the dimmers and the grandmaster had an extra uh, piece that slid out on it so that you could have enough leverage to dim everything at once. Yeah. <laughs> Your pictures are a great history of lighting equipment as well yeah. as yeah. a designer, I have to say. Um, but Mike, uh, work aside, what have you been up to during the shutdown and uh, any major life changes, new uh, projects or hobbies? Uh, well, like a lot of people, I've done some cooking. Mm -hmm. um, John yeah, right. Broderick, I don't know if any of you guys know John. Martin, you probably know John Broderick. I do. He's yeah. Metallica's lighting designer. He sent me uh, he sent me a bread recipe that I've done a bunch of times, and then I've tried my hand at cookies and then uh, a couple of cakes. And then the other thing that came up was uh, we have a neighbor out here on Long Island who's a commercial fisherman, and oh, he uh, I ran into him early in the pandemic, and he said, you know, we're not selling any fish. I'm getting these 1980 prices for fish, and you know he's he's like the Billy Joel Downeaster Alexa. He's like one of those guys yeah. right? who's out into out of Montauk. And uh, I said, well, I'll, we'll buy some fish from you. So he would call from the boat and say, you know, we, I have weak fish or whatever. So, oh, but he said he's a commercial fisherman. He can't fillet it. He has to, he can only sell it to you whole. Gosh. So he would call from the boat and say, we have whatever kind of fish. And then um, I would quickly look it up on YouTube, how to fillet this kind of fish. <laughs> and then, uh, and then go ahead and fillet the fish. That's one of my favorite answers, Mike. Yes. <laughs> And way to look it up on YouTube, young kids. Right. Right there. You can find everything on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> I learned plumbing on YouTube. <laughs> um, Martin, before I get to you, tell us about this. Uh, this is uh, me and my dad. Uh, this is the yeah. first time he ever got a chance to see me do a show. Uh, this was in 1988, so I'd actually been in the industry for almost 10 years at that wow. point. And uh, this is on the uh, salt and pepper uh Let's see, I think this was the Slammin' 88 tour. And uh, yeah, that's uh, a proud dad because when he came into the arena, I was actually in the middle of focusing the upstage truss and all I heard was his voice saying, I hope you know what you're doing up there. And I looked, I didn't even look down. I just said, I better fucking know what I'm doing up here. <laughs> and then point. I said, oh, hi, dad. <laughs> and it was the backlight, right? Backlight. It was the backlight. The backlight. There you go. Awesome. And is that a QM500 you're standing in front of? Uh, it is actually a QM500, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amazing. <It's a laughs> history lesson here. Talk about old year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Marin, what have you been up to uh, during the shutdown? Um, uh, something entirely different. I started a record label. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I was asked well, about a year and a half ago to uh, uh, manage a friend of mine's musical act. He was in the process of recording. And with management comes all the things that we have been all talking about, the business side of it. So I got him an accountant. I got him a lawyer. I got him all the things that we needed to start. Uh, took care of all the publishing, and we just uh, had a number one single in the UK the other day. So uh, awesome. my guy is Grant Hill and MOS, and we're actually going to be uh, huge, I think. So, <laughs> wow, yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that's, awesome. Yeah. that's my. That's a what a great pivot. Wow, I cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing webcasts. <laughs> Yeah, Jeff's just co-hosting this uh, this show <laughs> and loving every second of it. Yes. yes. Um, Kate, how about you? Uh, well, like I said, I had a baby right before oh. everything blew up. So instead of going back to work seven weeks after she was born, 
Um, I spent basically every second of her life with her. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, that's been awesome. great. I, well, that's that has been really amazing. Yeah, that's great. You'll never regret that. That's awesome. Yeah. No, absolutely not. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm supposed to go into this Sweeney Todd um, in Des Moines in June and July. And I'm like, how do I leave her? <laughs> yeah. Take her with you. Yeah, I, I, we're debating. Yeah. It's a long drive for a one-year-old. <laughs> long drive for a 50-year-old. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Tyler, how about you? I am uh, teaching myself music on an electric bass. Oh, nice. Wow. It's been fun. This is great. Not, not ready for a music label yet, Mark. I'm, I'm, we've been yeah, talking yeah. about like getting a designer band together. So now, now we have a bass player. Awesome. I'm there. And Martin, Martin's going to push, is going to do some uh, promo, uh, promotion. Uh, I'll, I'll sign you. <laughs> <laughs> so far, we have a, a lot of people who probably can't play together well enough. But by the end of this thing, we'll, we'll be great. Yeah. Um, we've come to the end of our time here. One last question, which I think we've answered. So this should be pretty quick. But uh, Tyler, let's stick with you. What advice do you have for young people who want to do what you do? Uh... Well, we've covered, you know, keep your overhead low. <laughs> um, have fun. Really, don't Great forget advice. to have fun. Great advice. Um, uh, 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 Kate? I would say put, put down your phone. Uh, ML Geiger used to say in grad school, she used to say to us, be here now. So I hope that people can step away from their devices and just be in whatever room that you're in, absorbing everything that's happening. Great advice. Uh, Mike Baldessari. Uh, my, my advice is to diversify. You know, you, you're, what I say to all the kids that I meet in any of these masterclass type situations is like, you know, go do something else. And by that, I don't mean go become a plumber, but be open to doing other things. You know, so, and, and look at what's happened this past year, right? Like if you didn't be able to know how to do some film and television and you know, theater just doesn't exist. And so what I say to the young kids too, is like, you're not a failure if you don't get to do a Broadway show. You know, there's a lot yeah. of other stuff out there and, um, you know, be open to doing other things. Yep, like starting a record label. Yep. Um, Martin, what, what advice would you give to people? Um, lead with your heart. This is an art form. Uh, you should absolutely love this if you're doing this. I know it's a lot of tech, it's a lot of business, but it's still art and you should really always lead with your heart. You guys are amazing, all, all great. Um, yes. Anything before we go you'd like to add or clarify or retract? <laughs> hey, it's live. <laughs> yeah, it's, it lives out uh, on the on Four Walls uh, Facebook and YouTube. So um, thank you again, everybody, for watching. Uh, thank you to the panelists. Um, it was another great episode. Yep. We'll be back next weekend for episode 42. Uh, Martin, Kate, Mike, and Tyler, thank you again. It was uh, great talking with you. Don't leave yet. Uh, and thanks, everybody. We'll see you Thanks, later. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Yep.